ever feel like you need to snap on like something uh something work related or something that you might need to snap on someone but then the weed makes you not do it no <laughs> it's saying, never necessary well no 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 it's not that it's like snapping on people it, it, it's easy yeah. like it's just like telling people the truth no one wants to hear that shit that's the most like hurtful thing you could do is just like look bro you fucked up or whatever like no one wants to hear that shit so just like whatever it is right weed just makes me not do it in a as aggressive way yeah so it's like uh, but i'm not i'm not a dickhead it's not like i don't want people to have to walk around on eggshells around me all day right it's not like that it's not like i'm like suge knight and motherfuckers and like fucking have my dogs eat them alive or fucking hold them at gunpoint or some shit it's uh-huh. just like yeah i feel like if you have a job and once you sign up for a job and you do that job incorrectly then whatever criticism comes your way yeah you, you need to be let know yeah, that you did yeah, something you wrong. Yeah, you signed up for it. For yeah, one hundred percent for sure. Yeah, and that that's to everybody. It doesn't matter if you're at the top of the building and you're in my position. Because when I fuck up, there's people above me who like own these companies, like major companies, that like told me before I've been fucking up and do all that shit. So I gotta deal with it too. Yeah, of so course. So it's like same goes to the people down at the lower bottom. Like even if you're you know whatever flipping burgers or you're a janitor or whatever, you don't even have a job. You still, whenever you fuck up. You know, you fuck up. Right. You still have to be held to a certain Accountable. standard. Yeah. 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 Is that something you take seriously, obviously, within your organization, making sure that all the parts are moving smoothly, that everyone's doing what they're supposed to? Yeah. Pretty much 100%. That's my job. Yeah. Can we just talk about, huh, how long you been in LA? Since I moved here? Yeah. A um, month and a half? Month and a half. Oh, you're new. You're new? Yeah. But I spent a lot of time. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Where are you from? Chicago. Okay. I don't uh-huh. know if I'm... Whatever. No, they probably, it'll pick it up. All right, That's cool. Fine. So, since you're new in LA. Uh-huh. Well, I I have experience, <clears throat> yeah, you know, yeah, coming yeah. out I'm, from I'm, I'm sure, of course. Yeah. But as you're here and you meet more people in the music industry, there's not, and I can't believe I just said it to you and I caught myself and I was like, ah, what am I doing? Because this isn't one of those situations, so I'm just going to inform you. Okay. Whenever someone says for sure or 100%. Uh-huh. It's the biggest dickhead move you could do. Because that's just like, <laughs> all right, no one cares. Move on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Really? Yeah. I feel like I say that when I genuinely agree with someone sometimes. No. No, no, no. Me, personally, yeah. No, bro. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, go to one of these, like, parties at, like, influencer houses. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. And though. it's just, you'll be talk. they'll ask you a question, and for no reason, because the minute you start talking about, like, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, 100%. I'll check it out. Yeah, for 100%. sure. 100%. Lit. Fire. Yeah. Uh-huh. Fire. Well, once you say lit, Fire. You know, Get the yeah for sure, uh-huh. hundred. So all, yeah, bro. all the synonyms. Yeah, yeah, all of the <laughs> yeah, bro. I don't yeah. know, bro. Whatever. What what else should I look for? Look out for. I don't know. In your experience, uh, just that mainly. It's there's a bunch of shit. It's just I don't, I don't know particular things. Like I don't have a list. Yeah, it just comes to me, and I'm like, oh shit, I was about to do that. Let me, okay. let me tell you. Oh, that's why it came into your mind. Cause I was like a hundred percent, but I was like, wait, why am I doing this? Cause it's not one of those situations where I feel like I need to say a hundred percent to. You didn't mean to cap, but you caught yourself kind of saying a cap. Uh, yeah. What I call it? Say. <laughs> I caught the cap. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Okay. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I did that. Yeah. <laughs> for, sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Naturally. Facts. Yeah. Oh, facts. Facts. facts, is a bit. facts but I'll, facts, I'll say facts. facts, and I'll mean it. We should. We should head out at five o'clock. Facts. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, never mind. I never said that's it. too many. I never that's too it. many letters for a text. I don't. I, sometimes I just I just be doing voice memos, bro. I I just I've, be like bet. Yeah, I like the voice memos too. Recently, voice. I memo. can explain myself. Be more yeah, clear. There you go, concise. and like people can understand the tone. Yeah, I feel like whenever they just read words, they don't know the tone you're saying. So if you're being sarcastic, you just look like you're being a dickhead. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like your communication skills are? No, they're awful. They're awful. Yeah. But isn't it necessary for what you do? To have good communication skills? Yeah. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> Where is that on the fucking <laughs> on I mean, the requirements? You got to have good communication skills. A lot of music producers yeah. have bad communication skills. Right. Well, but they're not the ones delegating. That's what I started out as. Sure, sure, sure. But right now, what you're doing as an executive. I had to break that. I'm getting better. I wasn't as bad as I was. I used to have social anxiety. Mm-hmm. That's why I also I smoke weed. It helps that. Helps. When when the idea of internet money uh, 
came into your head. How do you take that from the idea to inception? What were those steps that you took? We got big. Uh, well, I met Nick Mirror when he was 15. We were playing like Rocket League mm -hmm. and like Call of Duty, like Black Ops 2 or something like that. Um, and we met, well, DT, which was a producer too. He was like 16 at the time. He introduced me to Nick. Mm -hmm. And like uh, I was one of the biggest internet producers at the time. And it's like uh, I didn't care about like working with people or doing that because like I felt like everybody just wanted to work with me to figure out like how to sell beats online. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I fuck with Nick and DT so much is because they were just like two kids that never asked me anything about music. Like we were talking about like video games or like family shit, whatever. You know what I mean? It's just like I'm sitting here. And it's like I'm playing games with these kids and they're cool as fuck. And they, they look at me like, damn, Taz is on top. He's selling beats. He's doing this, whatever. And it's just like, damn, they didn't. They were cool the whole time. You know what I mean? I just like I always respected that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of producers I was cool with at the time told me like, yo, fuck them kids. Like, they ain't cool, whatever. Because they like hung out with other producers that they had beef with, whatever. Producer games are weird, bro. But mm. I was like, bro, like they're cool kids. Like, I don't care. I'm going to put them on. So I was Nick and DT. And I went to them and I was like, yo, I want to do something. I want to build I want to build a brand or something. Like, or just like a team of people I work with and it just be us. And we just only work with each other and we just build it up. And we could take over the internet. We did it. And that was internet money. And then they went on to go find Juice World and discover Juice World, do all that shit together. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's always been under like the, uh, the internet money umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. So it started just not music related really whatsoever. And then you just found out that. Yeah. The other guys happen to make music. Well, too. no, I, kn I knew they were producers. And like, it's before like, you started playing games It's like, together? bro, it's like, you know how, like, uh, I don't even know what a com good comparison this is because I was about to say something, too. I'm like, well, that's weird. But it's just like, bro, like, you know, like, whenever you're, like, you're dating a chick or something, right? And you, like, you checking to see if she's with you for your money or shit like that. And it's like, you know that she knows that you got money, but you're waiting to see if, like, she'll offer to pay for dinner and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, she's with me for other reasons of my money. She don't mind. Whatever. Right? Right. With them, it's like they knew I was a big producer, mm -hmm. and I knew that they were producers. I was, like, more so seeing, like, are they ever going to ask me for anything or, like, ask me for advice or help or tips or anything like that, like, as a producer? They never did. They were always just, like, treating me like I was just one of them. I was just cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I was just like, all right, cool. Then. So it's like from that point, I was like, damn, I know y'all make beats and shit after hanging out with them for a while and shit and just, like, developing a relationship. I was like, yo, bro, like, if y'all want to, like, send me beats or send me whatever, like, Let's start working on shit. And they're like, all right, bet, let's go. So right. that's what I'm saying. That's a good, not just for me, but anybody that like is in my position. We don't want to get approached and just be like, yo, bro, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're, we're people, bro. Like, yeah. what's up? We're good. Yeah, I, I respond to everybody who, who hits me like professional level. And don't just be like, hey, like I'm not going to yeah, respond no, to that. But just, you know what I mean? Just people would actually take the time and like will write me something and like yo hope you're doing good blah 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 whatever like i'll respond to that shit out but people it's just like yo listen to my music i ain't never checking that shit out because mm -hmm. i find all my artists anyways you know what i mean like i don't i'm not the type to go through all my dms and checking links and doing that shit to be like this is an artist because it's like i gotta just see him and want to listen to him on my own you right. know what i mean right yeah and you're gonna find them eventually if yeah if it's worth yeah it's a matter of like when not if you know yeah. What I mean? yeah if they keep doing what they're doing eventually your eyes are going to come across it yeah and it's like what people don't understand is like if i don't find an artist and i could just go sign one that someone else has found you know what i mean like i have no budget so therefore i can go sign anybody i want to sign who's like wants a deal you know what i mean like someone else go find the artist and they want multi-million dollar deal i could go do that they want a million dollars they want whatever you right. know what i mean like it's nothing do it's you mean when you say you have no budget, do you mean there's no ceiling yeah. to the budget? Okay. Just depends on the artist. Like, ain't like he could be an artist and be like, yo, I want a million dollars. I'm like, what's worth a million dollars? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, where's the music? Like, uh -huh. where's, the, where's the stats? Where's the fan base? Where's the platform? Show me that you're generating some type of, like, stats or income or, like, show me that you have some, like, crazy God-gifted talent that, that, like, defies all numbers and, like, you're just, like, one of them people who ain't been found yet. You know what I mean? Right. It's just you got to have something. Right. What do you think earned that for you to have, for example, the the no ceiling on the budget? Um. Shit, man. Honestly, just track record. Track record. Yeah. P hits meeting the right people. Me learning what my path was. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. as a music producer, a lot of people just get caught up in like, I wanna uh, 
just get like the biggest songs of the year like producer drake or post malone whatever and like that shit's cool like don't get me wrong like we we well nick produced on post malone's album and we were on drake's album uh but that's great but whenever you mention internet money you don't mention post malone you don't mention drake you mention Lil tecca which yeah. is like we help find uh ian dior juice world right you know what i mean like all these artists they're kind of artists that we kind of built with together not like oh yeah we just went and turned up the baby and got the baby like a big hit like that'd be amazing right, right. fan of the baby love the baby but i'm just saying like with me i kind of care more about like artist development and putting artists on as yeah. opposed to just like going and always chasing the big fish and i think that's the reason why internet money's been here like go look at the the producers that were like really killing shit three three years ago Three years later, a lot of them aren't here now. They ain't got that big record no more. They ain't got this because, yeah, they might have, like, a Summer Smash or, like, a whatever, like, a really big song one year, but what are you really doing after that? That's why it's better to build with an artist and get a catalog as right. opposed to, like, chasing down one big hit because once that artist comes to you and you got that big hit and they already, like, they already got that experience from you, they're gone. They're going to go find someone else who's going to give them that same hit, you know what I mean, who's, like, the newer upcoming cheaper version of you because you already got that hit and you're mm -hmm. expensive now you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah so yeah man i'll stay finding artists and putting them on yeah do you find you just find that more fulfilling too personally yeah and like i feel it's like it's like create a player it's like playing superstar mode right it's fun man yeah do you always if you're gonna sign an artist do you always have to have that certain vision for them beforehand or you can bring them you can just go based off I like their music and then figure out the rest later. Yeah, every situation is a different situation. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of times where, like, they don't have their presence online. Or they're, like, really shy, but the music's good. And it's like, man, you really got no personality. And then you meet them in person, and, like, you thought they had this good music. And you put them in a studio session, and they don't know how to work on songs. You know what I mean? They don't know how to write music. They don't know how to do whatever. Mm -hmm. Or they have the look. And then, you know, you meet them in person and damn, they don't look how they looked online. And then you get them in the studio and they can't make music for shit. Yeah. And then you got to go take them around and show them all the songwriters. And you know what I mean? And try right. to like, yo, work with this artist. Like, this is a new artist. I need help. Like, right. Kind of babysit them through it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just like, what direction do you want to go? Yeah. And there's some people that like you just meet them and everything aligns perfectly and they don't need no help. Mm -hmm. Only thing they need is like, I don't say guidance but just like assistance on like it's like bumpers bowling you know what i mean like they can't go into the gutter i'm here they're not gonna like lose it right but they can go wherever they want to go and go do whatever right there's some of those mm -hmm. those are the ones that i look for and the resources yeah yeah of course just whatever they didn't have when they were in their bedroom making yeah their music. and a lot of that is like comes from like mental shit too like waking up every day and just like training them to like make music and like think about what you want to work on that day and it's a, some people just like oh, i just want to work on shit on the weekends with my friends or i only make music whenever i got enough money for studio time or whatever so it's not that often whenever you're in the music industry like i don't know how most it's your job it's your job yeah. you wake up every day and you you figure out man i want to you chase that hit you know what i mean like i want i want that song that's going to change my life not only my life but give me something to like pass down to my kids kids you know what i mean like that type of shit yeah there's not many of those records that go around anymore so find the one that's like the one you kill yourself over it right it's a like grueling ass like mental process so a lot of the thing for me is just like calming a lot of people down and just being like yo we good or just whenever they're so busy worried about like i need a hit or i need the right song just keeping them in the process of working and just putting them around the right people. It's going to keep them inspired. Yeah. Yeah. And that process, it must be something you love if you're, if it's so grueling and stuff, but you're ready to do it over and over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's fire. I mean, it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cons to it. Don't get me wrong. Like you got to worry about putting people on giving people opportunity that you know, that wouldn't have it without you. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of situations I've been a part of where it's like, I could I could sit here and have an ego at the end of the day and be like, man, so and so wouldn't be anything without me or whatever. But it's like, who cares? Like people get on, bro. There's a lot of ungrateful people. I've helped a lot of ungrateful people. They'll get on and they'll put on, and then whenever they get put on, then they'll just be like, fuck off, and end up like, I did all this myself. Mm. I don't need you no more. Yeah. And it's like, 
all right, bro, well, since, since that, let me give you back all your accounts and let me give you back all these pictures I took for you and let me go give you back all these clothes I bought. And, you know what I mean? Like all this right. shit. But it's like... All those little building blocks that... Yeah, like the you, one of the reasons why you're here. You know what I mean? Like obviously talent's a part of it, but there's a lot of great singers. You know what I mean? Think about like American Idol, how many people like are like, they're like, you're good. And like two people will decide, or one will say you're really good, but two will say no. Mm-hmm. You don't go to Hollywood, right? There's like, everybody thinks they can sing, just like everybody thinks they ain't ugly. You know right. what I mean? Uh huh. I don't know, man. Is that um? So your taste in? Do you feel like your taste just happens to line up with what makes a hit record, or do you look for? Are you first thinking in terms of a hit record, if that makes sense? Um. I think I just understand, like, music's not, like, all right, so whenever I was little, I was first, not little, I was, like, 18, right? My mom worked at Starbucks her whole life. Yeah. Not her whole life. I'm sitting here, like, she was, like, a fucking, like, a farm. She was one. <laughs> like, yeah. a Starbucks farm, just yeah. fucking working. Can I take your order? <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> so, my mom worked at Starbucks a good bit of my life, you know what I mean? Uh, and whenever I dropped out of school in the seventh grade... My mom was like, she would come home from Starbucks because she opened a Starbucks, so she'd have to go early in the morning. She'd get home, and I'd be like playing video games or doing something. I ain't have, I ain't never had a job. I ain't never did anything. So like, music working for me is like one of those things. Like, if it didn't work out, I probably wouldn't be here. Yeah. Um, there was no alternative. Nah. Yeah. Um, Do you think that was helpful? Just real quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be here if I had, if I like half timed it. You yeah. know what I mean? A plan B isn't really your friend, no. is it? Plan B just takes time away from plan A pretty much but my mom would just tell me like what music like oh bruh basically i would just get to the point like look you work at fucking starbucks Mm -hmm. and you go and whenever someone says i want a double chocolatey chip frappuccino you know what to put in that double chocolate chip frappuccino whenever i go and make a fucking song or work on a song there's a million different ways to make a song so yeah so you're trying to really get over the First part is what way do I want to go mm-hmm. making a song? Mm-hmm. And then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I get the I was about to. I right, really do. I'm just, Yeah, but there's, there's just like a million different ways to do it. And some of those ways work out and a lot of ways don't. It's, it's a blank just, page. Yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. like, you know, anytime you you go get a, a, a blank ass fucking canvas right now, you can make something that people look at as like the next Bosky out of work. Right. Or you could just make, make something that my, yeah, my six-year-old son can draw. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's really up to you at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. I guess that's just... I don't really... I never looked at, like, we're talented, though. Because it's such a, like, I know the rules of music now where it's like, all right, bet. This is a good BPM. This is a good chord progression. Okay. I like this key. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like little little things you get started here and there, and you're like, all right, this is good. This is a good melody. Right. It's not like we're just in there fucking Stevie Wonder and the shit and fucking just beating on random things, like... See what sounds good. Yeah, yeah no. Nah. There's a rhyme to the, the yeah, reason yeah, yeah. or whatever. Like I it, it all starts like my shit just operates like a factory. Like I know the the step one the music making process is probably the music itself, the midis, the melodies, the loops for producers, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like finding the sounds you want to add drums to. Right. Um so I went and hired a bunch of fire ass loop makers. And I got nothing but loop makers just making shit for all my producers and I signed loop makers and we have all this shit. So every day we have like a WhatsApp. I have 50 people in internet money. Yeah. So every day it's like, yo, we have a session for Trippy Red. And boom, Trippy lately has only been wanting shit like this. So I need things from this key to this key, this BPM to this BPM. And then they have all day to work on a whole folder of loops. Mm-hmm. And then whenever we get in with Trippy, I'm like, yo, Trippy, you want to go through loops? He's like, yeah. <laughs> so start going through the fucking loops. And he's like, I like that one. Yeah. And he goes in there and starts recording. Then we'll start making the beat. Uh huh. And then we'll just, it's just throwing drums on top of loops, bro. Like, it's not that hard, but it's just like the real secret sauce is in like the keys of the loops and the BPMs, and it just being like us having the awareness to be like, I know what would take Trippy up right now. Like, I know what he mm-hmm. needs. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And the real challenge is having found that recipe out yeah. that you can, you know, mix yeah. in different things. What was that process like to figure that out? Was it. Just is it overwhelming lot. at all? The the only way to learn in life is the experience situations. Yeah. 
going to school and doing all this shit and delaying things and just sitting here and like mentally preparing yourself for when you're in these situations is cool. Yeah. But it's completely different whenever you're actually in those fucking situations. So just going through them and learning firsthand what not to do and what to do. When if you fuck up, you'll know. People mm-hmm. will tell you you're fucking up. You know what I mean? Or, that's just not that's not studio sessions, but that's life. Anything. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. just yo, I don't you don't know what you're doing or like if you're in a studio session, this these beats ain't it. Yeah. I don't, this ain't like they'll give us references like we want to make shit like this or like this or like this. Listen, bro, music's not new. There's only like what, twelve different notes or something like that in music? Yeah. How many different times can you combine a note to create a chord progression? And of those chord progressions, how many times can you combine those chord progressions? Sounds wise. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. everything you could think of has been done before. Once you look at music, like, oh, I just want to be different and like come in and just oh, I want to reinvent be. the game. You can't. Yeah. There's no such thing as reinventing the world because it's all been done before. And huh. I'm sure I'm going to get fucking people who put their fucking snares on the one yeah. and their fucking kicks on the is seven. That a, is that a no? No. Okay. And the, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a non-producer, I'm curious. Yeah, bro. It's like you sitting here saying like, yeah, well, you can't edit a fucking full a full length film in Windows Movie Maker. And they're like, oh, well, fucking watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, bro, different. but it's not practical. Yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just not done. Yeah, it's just, I know whenever we get in studio sessions, we're not doing that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. 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 So was there, there have been times though that people have, has anyone like around you ever like tried to like uh, reinvent the wheel like that and you had to kind of. Every day. Calm down. Yeah. Bro, every, everybody that comes out here, bro, they don't, they look at this music like it's a, a you know what I mean? Like I said, they put it on a pedestal and they're like afraid to make a hit record. I'm like, bro. Y- mm. y'all work y'all's whole life to get to this point to be able it's like interesting it's like a pokemon gym yeah you beat all these motherfuckers bruh to get to the top the top bitch and yeah. you ain't gonna beat her what's you the gonna, top bitch the hit like the, the the head leader of the pokemon gym you know what i mean like but, but musically what? oh i'm just saying like the opportunity okay, okay, of the okay. session you know what i mean like you work to get this opportunity to get in the and you're gonna, look, and you gonna sit example. here and be scared yeah like mm-hmm. nah get in there and network get in there and say what's up these artists like yeah, you may see them on Instagram. They got guns or what, but then they're cool. Like they ain't. Oh, you mean socially now? Yeah, socially, okay, yeah. even like performance. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, why would you let it be bigger than like you work for this? You're the supposed moment to be bigger yeah, than you. Yeah. Mm. Because like, if you have a bad session, they're not gonna. This isn't their last session. They're gonna yeah. go have another session with another producer tomorrow night. Yeah. And they probably never work with you again, but it's not like there's like a, a fucking social media message. It's like board. they're telling the other rappers. Yeah, like yo, guy. just so you know, fucking Stizzy Beats over here, fucking yeah. terrible. Yeah. Like no, bro. Just whenever you wake up, fifty first dates, clean slate. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. There's always more layers to it though. It's not just playing beats. Uh huh. How do you think they get the beats? You gotta make them right. Mm-hmm. So what do you, what do they do if they're not like musically inclined, but they want they want to make beats like. Uh, Kanye probably wasn't the most talented musician. He always said his drums sucked, and he probably couldn't, like, that's a G chord, but he sampled, and he had an ear for, like, picking samples, and he knew what would, like, sound good Mm because he just, like, listened to so much music. That's the thing about me is, like, I'm I'm so tapped into, like, all genres and all time periods. Like, if you listen to, like, Lemonade, right? Mm -hmm. Lemonade sounds like John Frusciante. Like Red Hot Chili Peppers thing is because whenever we were making that, I was listening to a lot of Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, Alec, which is a producer, artist, signed to me. He played the guitar on Lemonade. I was like, yo, bro, like I want some like Red Hot Chili Peppers meets Jimi Hendrix like style of shit. And then him being like a classically trained guitar player, right. him already being like, I got you. And just doing it. There's literally a video on like his Instagram mine, like me like, I no, saw, stop. I that. No, yeah. that's not it. Because he'll just whiten it the fuck up and like start doing all this shit and i'm just like i don't like that shit just keep it the bare minimum because you gotta remember like people get on this shit and they want to make it about them or like right this is my lick put their whole own and i'm like bro there's a whole artist that needs to go on top of this and we got drums that need to go on top of this and a synth bass and other little shit like yeah they're making it too crowded yeah, kind of yeah. Yeah, yeah i saw the video you're like literally like over his shoulder like instructing him yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. and he's making the adjustments like on the fly that's pretty impressive that's how it works yeah yeah so do you when you sign like a loop maker for example do you need to bring them in and see how they can do like live or you could just go based on nah they don't they're not allowed to come out there unless, unless they get praises from the team and that's just like working at home like mm-hmm. I got not everybody lives in L A and then I got people in different countries you know what I mean but right. um 
if if people are consistently like raving about you and being like, yo, like their loops are fire, their their melodies are crazy, or their their beats are insane or whatever, and I'm like, all right, then maybe they need to come out here and be in some of these sessions. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But um, it it starts like I said, just working up to that moment. Like there's different levels of this shit. Right. So there's you, guys you've never met face to face. Yeah, I mean, like it's not because like I I don't want to or whatever, but that's just because like. You I'm never shit. worry that maybe that you know you don't necessarily know like their vibe or anything until you meet them. Nah, because it's not like they get like songs. You know what I mean? Like it's just like give us shit, uh-huh. and if you get anything, we'll let you know. It's right. not like we're sending them songs for them to leak or like they they're finding out about like industry information or some shit. You know what I mean? Like we got chats separated for like newer members to come in, like all that shit. Right. It's like a whole system. Yeah. The guy who owns Walmart, I'm sure he hasn't met every person that works at every Walmart. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I got 50 producers. That's not as many people who works as many Walmarts. But right. No, I see. People live, live in all different types of places and shit like that. And, like, a lot of people have their own situations. Like, there's some people in their money are, like, single parents. And they can't, like, travel to L.A. Or, like, you know, their mom has, like, cancer. Like There's other circumstances. Yeah, home. like, stuff yeah. like that. And it's sure. just, like they can't be out here for whatever reason and it's like whenever they we do see them it's always love you know what i mean like they're we got in our money members everywhere yeah yeah um so when it comes to a single like lemonade you know leading the album um is that like does that feel like a lot of pressure to find that single that hit that can really like carry the album forward or um, it just is natural at this point whenever i was doing it i wasn't thinking about it mm-hmm. now that we have it it's there like yeah. the pressure's there but the lemonade thing is just like once lemonade happened and like we dropped it i didn't care anymore you know what i mean like about i don't want to say like i didn't care about the album like i care about the album obviously but it's just like i knew that i knew that we're good like you ever seen like a space shuttle like launch where mm-hmm. they gotta go to like the moon or somewhere like the yeah. space station some yeah, shit yeah. Um, and you know how they got like different barriers and it's like once they hit these barriers like you know like the, the chances good. Of, of survival them making it, is yeah. increasing right yeah yeah it's like that it's like that type of thing uh-huh yeah so that was one of those check marks that you had to meet yeah yeah but in that process that's not like that's not driving you nuts or anything mm. whether or not that check mark is going to be met or you're not because i met it yeah like a uh, bro what's it i don't know i was gonna because i looked it up like the other day and i forgot who but like well i went number one in the uk as an artist bro that's crazy. Nirvana's never went number one in the UK. Wow. Bob Marley, Foo Fighters, like a bunch of people that like I look up to and like idols to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like I just understand the history of music and just music in general. So the fact that like I have it and I have like one of the biggest songs of the year mm-hmm. that like I could say is like, yo, year 2020, a lot of people had shitty years. I know I did whatever I needed to do to make sure that like I had a good year for me. Yeah. I feel like I did my job this year. Yeah. So it's like next year. I don't. It's not like whenever I wake up every day, bro. It's not like I have like a. Uh, um, yo, I did this yesterday. I'm good. Like every day is like. Oh yeah, there's a whole new list. Clean slate yeah. every day. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I got I got songs I'm working on. It's like Lemonade. Also, bro, is like we did Lemonade in 2017. No shit. We did it October 7, 2017. Wow. So. That just tells me right there, what else am I sitting on that could be one of the biggest songs in the world? Yeah. You think there's folders from Bro, yeah. Back? I mean, yeah. Yeah, bro. Of course. Mm-hmm. I got, we got so many songs, bro. So much shit with so many people. Right. And it's just about, we be hearing it so many times that we get tired of it. So it's like, we don't want it to come out or like, we're really critical of our shit. And the thing is like a lot of, a lot of the artists that we work with, or y'all heard me mention before, like a lot of their biggest songs were all songs that they hated. So it's like, hmm. sometimes you just got to put shit out you don't like and see what happens. Yeah. Did it, so you had to convince them sort of to sometimes, put it out? Yeah. yeah, some of the artists for sure. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to, because I was about to give you like multiple. Specific not, nah, I examples. Can't, nah, yeah, nah, yeah. Nah. But is that frustrating sometimes? If, yeah. If there's a song you yes. like, yeah, that's got to be crazy. And it's it's especially frustrating whenever you, you're like, nah, like, People will look at me and be like, I'm a dickhead because I'm like, nah, shut the fuck up. We're doing this. Like, I'm saving your life right now. I'm like, yo, you got a hit record. Shut the fuck up. I don't care what song you like. This is a hit record. Yeah. Like, people kill to have these type of records. We're putting mm-hmm. this out. Like, I don't give a fuck. We're doing this. 
I'm saving your life. Damn, yeah. And they're just like, no, I don't And you're want saying that. this to artists, established yeah, artists. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes they don't want to hear it. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you be doing that for them, like, pretty much. And then they'll be like, whatever, fuck you. People be like, Taz is a dickhead. They don't want the artist to do what they want to do. But you know how many songs that y'all listen to on playlists? Because, like, we were like, nah, put the shit out. Yeah. And they're like, nah, nah. Yeah. Nah, I don't want to do it. Against their own. One of the biggest songs country. this year was one of them fucking songs. Really? Yeah. So it's just like. You can't name it? Nah. Okay. No, nah. but right. I mean, just speaking from the lemonade perspective too. Then, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you, you know, I mean, artists passed on lemonade. Of uh, getting on it, taking it, having it. We made lemonade. Me, Johnny Yukon, Jazzy. We made lemonade October seventh, two thousand seventeen. Mm-hmm. Don Tolliver didn't even get on lemonade until September two thousand eighteen. He didn't cut his version of lemonade. Uh huh. So before Don even did all that, whatever, we're shopping the record mm. to artists. Like, yo, do you want this record? It was sent to a whole bunch of artists, and everybody said no. And then... So when they're saying no, are you like, what the fuck? What are you thinking? Nah. Because like, it's, right, I was... I, bro, I got, in, I got into the music industry August 31st, 2017. Mm-hmm. I've been in the industry about a month and a half at this point. So I'm sitting there like, this is normal. Mm. That's normal. Yeah. I I just know that, like, that day we made Lemonade, like, me, Nick Mira, E True, Jazzy, Johnny Yukon, every single studio at APG, and if you're familiar with the APG studio session setup, yeah. they got, like, four rooms and, like, an A room over there. We went from room to fucking room and played the original version of Lemonade on speakers as loud as we can in every single room. And I was like, that's, I was like, this is a special song. But it's like, I was still trying to understand song structure and it was like two hooks and like a verse would just ah, like, I don't know if right. you, if you go look up the original shit, uh, you'll see like the verse I'm talking about, but the, the hook is like the one, yeah. um, Don cut it and it wasn't even like Don was cutting it to like have the record. I think he was just cutting to see how he sounded. You know what I mean? Cause Don's a very talented artist and he's like a very talented writer. You know what I mean? So it's right. just like, it's not one of them situations. Um, so fast forward past that time, Don Tolliver comes out, he's on Astroworld. He's one of the biggest artists in the world. You know what I mean? Like he's doing his thing. Yeah. Very talented artist. Um, I never had the version of Lemonade with Don on it. I didn't even know Don cut it. Really? Yeah. So what are you playing when you're, when you're going from studio to studio? No, no, no. So this was done without me knowing, because this is like one of the things where it's like, I think the label was just trying to see how Don sounded on the record and he just cut it in the night while he was doing like six original songs. You know what I mean? Right. I think he's like, oh, I'm going to do him a favor and just cut it for him and see how they like it. Um, And I never got it. I never heard anything on it because I I just don't think that the label was going to do anything with it because it wasn't like it was Don's record. He did it for them. You know what I mean? Like that type of thing. So uh, it was just sitting around. And then... So at a certain point, you're like, this might not even go anywhere. Well, bro, like... I didn't know about the Don shit. And at that point, like, you know, we make so many songs every day. It's where, like, you just forget about records. Right. And it's just like, all right, whatever. Like, maybe it just wasn't meant to be or maybe nothing happened. But um, so around the time where Don allegedly cut it, uh, which was, like, September of 2018, Jazzy started the conversation to put the record out with, like, my team, Internet Money. And, like, because I don't know if she was signed or wasn't signed or whatever the situation was with her. Mm-hmm. Um, very talented artist, very fire artist, very fire songwriter. Um, super good person, super cool. Uh, so I was like, yeah, you know, love the record. The record's fire. Let's do it. Like, you want to put it out? Put it out. Like, I always told Jazzy, and I was always supportive of her artist shit. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, you're fire. Like, whatever. I remember the first day me and her got in the studio session, which was the day we made Lemonade. Uh, I was like, yo, like, we got to work on shit for you. Like, you got to, you got to just, you know, I I remember, like, just supporting her music and doing all that, right? So we made Lemonade, and she wanted to put it out. And this is, I didn't know Don cut it. So I was just like, you know, nothing's happening with this, whatever. So I was like, yeah, sure. So she actually put it out. Okay. So Lemonade was released. If you go on YouTube and see Jazzy's version of Lemonade, yeah. we're, we produced that. I think that. I heard it. That's the original song that we made October 7, 2017. Huh. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And she just put it out, and I guess just like I don't know what her situation was, or if the label slept on it, or whatever. But it just didn't end up like getting traction or going anywhere. Right. So, um, 
I don't think Don and them ever knew that that song was actually released until after Lemonade came out. Yeah. But, uh, man, it's crazy because this is the whole thing of Lemonade. Like, yeah, I've never, yeah, I've never the told whole... the whole story of Lemonade. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm texting Flea. He's he's the next uh, guy we got. Oh, yeah, so. yeah home, homeboy Flea from, uh, from Queens. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's my boy Flea. He's over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's my I saw in your no jumper that uh, you were fucking with. Yeah, him. that's my boy. Yeah, yeah. He could chill. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so lemonade shit. Jazzy releases the song. It just gets like two thousand plays or something like that on Spotify or two million or so. I don't know. What, I don't know what the number was, but it was just like whatever. And then uh, fast forward, I go out. I sign a, a pub deal. And this is from August 31st, 2017 to now. Mm -hmm. So just to give you a timeline, I signed a pub deal. I'm a producer. No one knows who the fuck Nick Mir is. I got in the industry solely off of Big Sean. Well, Big Sean was on the song. They took Big Sean off. It was uh, Designer and Gucci Main Life, right? Mm -hmm. That was my record. I, I took meetings, APG. I signed August You leveraged 30. that into a... Into a your deal. Situation. Yeah, yeah. I, had a, I had a crack and I kicked that bitch open yeah. off a of designer song. That, that's a... That's a fucking tough thing to do, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of people have there you go have placements like that. Yeah. So what? What's and it's not like it was a big record or anything like that. Yeah. Like, so I think it's just because I had internet money, okay. and the whole situation. Like I had like a whole team of people, and it's just like I felt like whenever they signed me, it's like they knew that they were getting me, but they also knew they were getting the whole team. Right. You know what I mean? So I think it was like we could sign sixty five people for the price of one. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, that's how it kind of worked at the time. I was new. I didn't understand the game or whatever. So uh, did that. Got in the game. Signed a deal for nothing. And I don't care. I, was, I signed a pub deal for $100,000. $100,000. Yep. So I was like. Just yeah. to get your foot. Yeah. And all, I, after after you cut management in 20%, your lawyer takes 5% and the taxes go, you're left with what? Yeah. 40000 Mm-hmm. 60,000 who cares it's, you know what I mean like whatever yeah. it's not about that for you it was about yeah but I mean like the money at that point y'all gotta understand I was one of the biggest internet producers so I was yeah. making half a million a year online selling like you were doing just fine and yeah. I own wave supply so it's like a whole it's like splice like that whole type of thing so it's like we generate over a million dollars a year just through selling drum kits every year just that alone mm -hmm. so it's just like um, money wasn't really a, a thing for me it was more like the opportunity and I always stress everybody to, like, chase the opportunity, never chase the bag. Because, like, whenever you just take advantage of the opportunity, more money will come your way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, for me, man, like, I, I, I got in the game. I seen it that it wasn't what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go be Scott Storch or, you know, like, one of just the biggest producers. Right. For me, and I know a lot of people are going to get offended when I say this shit, is, like, for me, being the biggest producer in the game is, like, being the best bag boy at a grocery store. It's, like, they don't, they're not respected enough by the establishment, like, the labels, the people... And they get a small percentage in there. You know what I mean? Like 3% yeah, yeah. of a yeah. royalty. You don't think that's changing at all? I th it's just the industry standard right now. Yeah. So. I see. 3% royalty, 50% publishing. But the respect thing, you don't think that's I mean, it is forward? now. And, like, th that's why, it, you know, it's all building up. Like, the internet money shit, why we're doing what we're doing now. But, yeah. you know what I mean? I signed a deal. We did the shit, whatever, off of anything. I seen what it was. I got in the game and seen other, like, big executives were, like, making a killing and doing what I really want to do, which is like break and develop artists. So I was like, you know what? Boom. I'm not going to make beats somewhere. I'm going to shift and I want to go do a label. So at that same time, Nick Mir and DT, they found this kid from Chicago named Juice World. So like I was still on the internet whenever they first found Juice. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I wasn't caring about the music industry at all because I didn't sign my pub deal at that point. You know okay. what I mean? I wasn't hip to like, seeing that that's what i wanted to do okay so i was just like all i seen was my two producers and they were taking away time from like making beats and selling beats online and i was like what are y'all doing like what like why are y'all working this kid like what oh by sinking their time into him yeah yeah, yeah but yeah. it's just like also like i don't think i really gave Ju juice like the fair shot you know what i mean it's just because i didn't care mm -hmm. and i was just so worried about like you gotta understand when you make and sell beats online bro like you're, you you got to train yourself to not care about the product because you're giving you're making a sole product and that's where you 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 start caring and the minute you export you stop caring you see what i'm saying because Why is you're, that? because you're selling that beat for $25 to whoever if he who, wants to rap knows? on it yeah 
doesn't matter if they're a good artist or not. Mm -hmm. They could rap on this beat for twenty five dollars. So you can't care about what the outcome of that song is. When, you know what I mean? So yeah, I was just yeah. made to look at music like a profit, not really like you care about the final product. There you start go. To finish. Just yeah. really crafting out songs and I making see, sure yeah. they're how I want them to be. So if you so sell a beat, they're doing it with juice. I'm just like. What are y'all oh, doing? Oh, okay. That was that? a whole different like yeah. angle to it that you yeah, haven't yeah, seen. Yeah, nah, okay. But it's just like as I that was like four months, and then he that, also to be fair, it's not like they were showing me lucid dreams or all girls are the same at that point. You know what I mean? Like it's just like it was early, the early, yeah, right, the early right. juice stuff, which is still really good. I still listen to it in the car all the time. Like the the same records they were playing me then. I was just a dumbass. You know what I mean? Like I did, just didn't know any better. Yeah, but um. Fast forward, I signed my pub deal. Nick and DT are still working with him. He's starting to bubble around the same time. And then I get swooped up, kind of caught in the middle of this whole, like, uh, label bidding war and shit for, like, juice. Like, people get involved, and it's just, like, me getting in fights with my publisher, label, whatever, because I'm, like, I sent y'all them. And y'all, you know what I mean? Like, right, what the right. fuck? So it's, like, all this shit, and I'm just, like, yo – we we missed out on juice. And so you came like, around at a certain point. Well, yeah, because like I was already before any of that. It's not like I was like as soon as labels came out, I was like, oh yeah, that's right, yeah, juice is. Like I remember hearing all girls are the same and be like, I wasn't crazy about the other shit, but this shit's fire. Now I get you it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. It's, it's not even like a now I get. It. I was like, all right, I see. Like this shit's kind of hard. Like you know, like your homeboys. Like if your homeboys making music, like you're gonna shit on the first couple songs, and then they gotta really prove it to you. Well, and then you just hear when you like. Damn, this shit kind of fire. Like, yeah, damn, yeah. no, this is hard. Uh -huh. Like, damn, y'all got it. This is hard. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you hear that shit. And like, there was a couple other records that Nick and DT came to me about, and they were just like, um, Juice doesn't have management. He doesn't have anything. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't have his whole situation. People are reaching out. He just don't really know what to do. And I was kind of like connected with some people, but honestly, looking back in the position I'm in now, I wasn't shit. So I was just like, uh, yeah. And I was sitting there giving him advice on records and doing this shit when in reality, it's just like, I don't know if that's what I should have been doing. I should have just more so been like, let's go, let's do this shit. You know what I mean? Instead right. of just worrying about how good the records the were then. Yeah, yeah a little, little dumbass, stupid shit. But, right. you know, hindsight's a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. That whole situation, everything happened. Juice goes on to be become one of the biggest artists, everything like that, because Juice signs to Interscope, whatever. I signed to Alamo on a, on a label deal, which is a... Under inter Interscope. There you go. Uh -huh. And, uh... Yeah, so I just basically I met Z Kirschberg through um, the whole Jew shit. Who's that? He's the one. He was an A and R at, at Alamo, and he okay. was the one who like kind of brought me in over there. But I guess he like helped broker the Juice deal with it or some shit. I don't know what his involvement was with Juice. And this is simultaneous to the APG situation. What do you mean, like same time? Like me getting in fights with him over that shit, whatever. No, you being with Alamo and with APG. No, I was at. See, there's different things like a publishing deal. Yeah, you can be at a publisher. Yeah, but APG you can do it simultaneously. A yeah, yeah. APG is okay. a publisher. They're my publisher. Yeah. Alamo is a people I did a label deal with. Yeah. So it's like you could do I could I could went somewhere and did an artist deal. Right, right, right. You know what All I mean? All at the same time. Or That's fine. Did a production deal or management. You know what I mean? Like whatever. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of different shit you could do. Yeah. So yeah, man, I went and did a label deal at, at Alamo and I ended up signing my first artist, which was Trevor Daniel over there. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um Alamo came, that shit went. We kind of ended on bad terms. All that shit, ever, everything happened. I found Ian Dior. Um, that led me to 10K Projects. That's where I'm at now with my label. Uh, which kind of brought me around to like where I was telling Elliot, which owns 10K. I was like, yo, bro, I would love to do like an internet money project. And he's like, I love it. Like, it's the Tide Show. Great. Yeah. Beautiful. I met that guy. Let's do it. Yeah. The greatest. Yeah. Bro, he's younger than me. It's really? Great. Yeah, he's younger than me. No shit, really? Yeah. I could have swore he was like. He's 26. No, he's 27 now. He's 27 now. Are you shitting me? Yeah, I'm 28. Yeah, Elliot is younger than me. So it's just I would like, not have taken him for in his 20s. Yeah, he's, no offense or anything. No, no, no. Yeah. He's the he's the greatest though. But no, yeah, he's he's, sick. he's always just empowered me and like you gotta understand like, um, I remember whenever I did Trevor Daniel, like there was people like Nah, he 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 looks like a songwriter. He doesn't have like the the hit artist look. And I was like, I don't right. give a fuck. Do y'all hear falling? Like this shit's amazing. You know what I mean? Like the songs, and they were like, Nah, we're just gonna give the song to another artist. I can't say who on the label who's like. Popping, it already has hits. Like, we're going to give it to him instead. And Fuck. I'm like, nah, we already got a complex premiere set up tomorrow. We're dropping this shit. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, different parts and periods of times of my life, my life, like, 
the Jew shit, the Trevor shit, all this different shit where it's like people's told us no. Elliot's been one of the first people who's like really empowered us. And like whenever I say I want to do something, like, yeah, let's go, let's do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like the internet mar- money artist shit, when I was like, I want to do it. And he said, sure. I wasn't expecting him to say, yeah. So right. I was, at that point, I was expecting him to just be like, I was like going to just start planting my seed. Be like, yo, I want to do the artist. And he's like, no, nah, I Slowly don't Slowly break it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nah, he said, yeah. So like, you weren't expecting for it to no, just no, no, be. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So I was just like, fuck. He's like, I love it. Let's do it. He's like, oh. <laughs> He's like, let's do it. We'll we'll get the contracts up and you'll have it next week. I'm like, so at that point, okay. I'm like, I guess we're dropping music. So then we went, and, like, the first time I met Tekka, um, I brought, well, Tekka, Tekka's manager brought him out here, but it was to link with us because I hit Tekka on Twitter. I said, let's do an EP. And he wasn't really, like, known or anything at that point. So it's just, like, pretty easy for him to respond back to me. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, bet. He when came, is this? Uh, the first week of January 2019. Okay. He came out his first day that me and him started working. The, the day was January 3rd, 2019. Mm-hmm. And that's the day we did Ransom. That's the day we did the Shots. That's session. the day we did Did It Again. That's the day we did Somebody. Fuck, man. We yeah. did the, all those records are platinum. Uh huh. And we did uh, The Score. We did a bunch of records like that day that all went like gold or platinum. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like one of those songs, Somebody, I was just like, man, Tekka went and blew up. And this is one of the songs that we really liked. That like I don't think anything happened from this thing, so I was like, this is the only song I got. And I talked to Tekka Tekka and it was cool with me using it, so I was like, I'm putting it out. I went and got Tyga on it. Didn't want to get, they didn't want Tyga on it. I was like, all right, whatever. So Who didn't want Tyga on it? Just like the the label, you know uh-huh. what I mean? So I was just like, Tekka right. was down with it though. Huh? Tekka was cool with that though. Yeah, no, yeah, Tekka was cool with it. Yeah, but it was just like that whole shit, and then I remember asking Tekka, I was like, well, who would you want on it? And Tekka was like. A boogie will be fire. <laughs> it was like, oh, yeah. all right, bro. Yeah. So you know we had to do the fucking jungle gym, fucking jumping over people and doing that shit to get it. A boogie, yeah. Boogie cut it, figuring out the business for that end. Um, when you say you had to do the jungle gym shit, it's you just had like to going through people and just like, yo, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. boogie, because I didn't know boogie, so it's just like, yo, you know boogie, like yeah, and then it leads a dead end. You meet finding someone, someone like, who yeah. knows someone who knows, and then someone. meeting someone that like boogie trusts enough to like. Yo, let me play you the record. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that type of shit. And yeah. him like trusting him, them bringing him a record. Yeah. Um, yeah. Doing all that shit. I got the record done. And I I remember just talking to people before I put it out. I was like, yo, is this going to be a good record? It was like, yeah, it's going to be a good record. We put it out. It went gold in four months. Yep. Um, somebody, Lil Tekka and A Boogie. And at that point, whenever I put that record out and started doing as well as it did everything, people's like, where's the album? Like, do you have an album? Mm. I was like, no. They just assumed that it I was didn't a have single. an album, and it's not like I had songs. I was like, man, well, whenever I do an album one day, I would love to have these songs. Yeah. Um, because regardless of what y'all think, a lot of these artists are stingy as fuck on these records, and they're not like, take it. You see what I'm saying? Oh, they want it for their own project. Yeah, yeah. Of if course. they don't want to use it, they're not just gonna give it to you. It's not like they're like, yeah, take it. Like a lot of people are weird about their records. Right. Just in case they're like, oh, well, I need to go back to that time period and like go get me a record I didn't drop yet. You know what I mean? Like some yeah. shit like that. Um. So. How do you deal with that? Man, it's a whole nother story. God damn. It's a lot of, a lot of, yo, well, we'll just swap this and we'll do that. And like, what's it going to take, man, for, for me? Because like I said earlier, like a lot of artists hate their biggest records. So I'll be like, man, that record's crazy. And they'll be like, nah, I hate that record. And I'll be like, and I'll just keep a mental note. And I'll be like, hey, bro, you remember that record you hated? Let me Can I have it? Let, let me show you. Let yeah. Me, let me show you. Let me go get so-and-so on it. We'll do whatever. Yeah. But uh, back to the, the label shit, whatever. I was just doing my label thing. I dropped somebody. They said, where's the album? I didn't have an album. I was just getting high as fuck every day working on shit. A um, bunch of shit came and went. Uh, we were working on the Ian shit, doing all that, whatever. It was June of this year, or right before June. So, what is it, May? Yeah, May. And it was like two weeks left before June 1st. I went on Twitter, and I said, I want to do an album. I said, I'm going to do an album, and mm-hmm. I'm going to turn it in before June 1st. I have nothing. Damn. No songs. Damn. The only song we had was like Blast Off. And May of 2020? Yeah. God damn. Yeah. That was fast. Yeah. That was fast turnaround. Yeah. Well, I mean, we dropped somebody August or October 11th, 2019. So that's a long wait yeah. to May to just be like, I want to do an album. Yeah. And people just finally quit asking me about the album. I was like, damn, do they not care about I'm. A, I was kind of pumped fake. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do an album for like eight months. And they're like, all right, yeah. And once they just stopped caring, once I said I'm going to do an album, I was like, all right, fine. I'm really going to do an album now. Fuck y'all. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, I did the album. We put it together um, in, in two weeks. The whole album. I asked my A&R Matt. Holy shit. 
My, yep. I asked my interim, Matt McFarland. I said, "Yo, Matt." He said, "Yo, what's up, buddy?" He's the he's the he's the person who took a uh, who took a chance on me to sign me uh, when you know what I mean. Just, you just said earlier, like the song I had that I got signed off of wasn't even like a big song. So it's like Matt has any, he needs anything. That's my boy. Like I got him. Yeah. So that's because he was there. Exactly. The first, yeah. That's just the relationship I have with Matt. You know, what yeah. I mean? like I wouldn't be here without Matt. So that's I, good that you maintain that. Yeah, and recognize yeah, yeah. that. Of course. Yeah. But that's like the thing is like people look at me, they think I'm like an aggressive person. It's like, nah, I'm a very loyal person. I'm a very like cool person. It's like. You do something for me or I do something for you, that's it forever. Like, we got that type of relationship, you know what I mean? It's not like I'm like, fuck you or, like, I'll stab you in the back. I'm not. I'm a very loyal person. It's whenever people do, like, conniving or shit that they know is, like, foul yeah. that I get upset about. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not afraid to cut that yeah, off. Yeah, 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 nah. But um, I hit up Matt. I was like, yo, Matt, uh, I want to I wanna do an album. So if you have any records laying around that you're thinking of that you think it would make sense. Because, like, the reason why I was called Before the Storm is because Corona was going on. I was supposed to do an internet money festival this year. But it just didn't happen. And then, uh, so the cover art is like the festival, what it was supposed to be. Uh, and before the storm was just like, I was like, well, I have all these artists signed to me. I was like, like Ty and like Alex, Spirit Air. Yeah. I was like, I'll just do a project of them and then that'll just be it. And then the storm will be like where I put all the big artists, like what Don Tolliver are gonna know. So whenever I talked to Matt, I was like, yo, if you have records, just anything, bro, because it's not supposed to be a big album. So just anything. Yeah. And he's like, well, I have a couple of things. He's like, I. He's like, I, you remember that song Lemonade you got? I was like, yeah, from 2017. He's like, yeah. He's like, Jazzy released it, but he's like, do you know that Don cut it? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, and then, you know, Don went on to become like a big ass artist and shit. Yeah. I was like, Don cut it. Like, how am I just not hearing about this in like 2020? I was like, y'all should have told me he cut it whenever he cut it. You know what I mean? But uh, did you feel any type of way about that? No, 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 that no, no, no. It wasn't even like that. I was just more so like, can you send it to me? Can I, can I hear it? You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I heard it. It was over the original beat, and like Don had a little more like auto tune on his vocals and shit like that than the version y'all have now because they like remixed it and pulled some of the the vocals back and shit. But uh, as soon as I heard it over the original beat, I called Matt up. I said, "Yo, call the studio, get me the acapella." They sent me the Don Tolliver acapella. I was outside high as fuck. I told Alec, I said, yo, Alec, you want to work on this? And Alec said, fuck it, bro, let's work on it. So we go in there, he plugs in the guitar, and that's the video you see is, like, wow. the acapella playing to the original. He didn't even hear the original beat or nothing. Yeah. So he's just sitting there, and I'm just, like, giving him the shit. I'm like, yo, I want it like this, I want it like that, this, so just start playing. And he goes, I'm like, no, pull it back. Adjusting, it. adjusting. Yep, yep. yep. And that's Lemonade. And I remember getting the guitar down on the vocals, and just, like, that moment, it's like, uh... Harry Potter, whenever fucking he gets the wand and like the fucking wind and shit and the light starts happening, it's like he knows yeah. it. it's like some special shit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It was like making lemonade. It was like that moment where it's just like, damn, this is happening. That's why I pulled out my phone. Yeah. It's like I'll record moments like that where I'm like, damn, I'm going to want to look back on While this. While you're moment. in it, you recognize that it's yeah, special. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Damn. So I was just like, damn, I need to record this. Like, this is that moment. So I'm doing it. And then I remember sending it out there, but I'm like, yo. And they're like, I don't think Don's going to approve it. And then they heard it. Cause they didn't hear it when they said it. I was like, "Yo, yeah. I did a version." I'm like, "Yeah, but it's probably a long shot. I don't know, whatever." I'm like, "Bro, just listen." And they're just like, "This is a hit. Like, yeah. this is crazy." And it was just over like a guitar, like an acoustic guitar. So, uh, just made it happen, bro. And then I took Damn. that, and then Nick laid the drums on it, and we did all that shit. And then I kind of had like a rough version of Lemonade, and I was like, um, at the time I was like Don Tolliver. And I was just going through all Don's shit. And I really liked the song he had with Nav. Uh, recap or whatever on Nav's album, Good Intentions, because that shit just came out at the time. Uh -huh. And I was like, I really fuck with that shit. And I was like, I think they sound good together with their voice. Yeah. I was like, what if I just put Nav on it? And then I was like, it was supposed to just be Nav and Don. And then I remember I was like, the guitar kind of sounds like Yosemite from uh, Travis's project. And Gunner was on that. I was like, damn. Fuck it, bro. I was like, they're all cool, right? Like, they're on the same, like, yeah. they all hang out with each other, do whatever. I was like, let's get them all on the same song then. Yeah. So I made it happen, paid blah, blah, blah for whoever. I got the song done. I'm sitting on it. And then I'm like, I want to put it out August 4th. This is, like, July. And then they're like, who's going to do the video? I was talking to Omar Jones. Omar Jones sent me a fire treatment, crazy yeah. treatment. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, I'm going to roll with Omar. Like, this shit's fire. Like, this treatment's crazy. And the budget was, like, stupid for the video. Like, stupid. Yeah. Um, In terms of how big it was. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was like, all right. And then I was sitting there. I was like, the song was called Lemonade. And I was, you know, me being high as fuck. I'm like, 
What if we just have lyrical lemonade shoot it? Cause yeah. it's lemonade and it's just kind of like on brand. Seems like a no brainer. Yeah, and then yeah. I started talking to Jake and you know like, Jake was just like, I'll I'll talk to Cole. I'll run it by Cole. Yeah. I don't know if you know Jake, but I know Jake. Yeah, yeah. Just, I'm, you know. I'm, you got all the impressions of all these yeah. guys, <laughs> and I, I know all of them, so I yeah. I know that they're accurate. Uh yeah. So Jake was just like down. I was like, all right, fuck. So you know, he's like, hey, I talked to Cole and and, and it's a go. And Cole yeah. Cole says he's gonna do it. So. Uh, Cole's gonna give you a treatment. We're gonna go from there. I'm like, fuck. All right, bet. So I had to tell Omar, like, yo, bro, whatever. And he probably understood. We sure. only had like a week to do treatment and shoot it, though. Yeah. And they wow. are flying from Chicago out here. A week from treatment to moment, it has to come out? No, the moment that. That Cole he said, yeah. Yeah. A, a week from then it had to come out. No, a week okay. from then we had to shoot. Okay, okay, okay. And yeah, then yeah. it didn't actually end up. We had to push the record back after we shot the video because, like. He needed time to edit and shoot. No, no, no. The video is done because we were ready to drop. It was supposed to come out on the 31st, uh -huh. July 31st. That was on a Friday. Yeah. But um, we were the video. <laughs> I'm not going to get it. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm curious. The video shoot was great. Like, Cole and them are fire. Like, that's family over there. Lyrical, all that shit. They did a good job. Everybody did their thing. It was just more so like a label mix up. And, like, uh, they didn't get somebody's runner right. You know what I mean? Like, I want this in my trailer with this, this, and yeah. then the third. So they One left. of the artists? They left, yeah. Oh, fuck. Didn't film. Period. So everyone's yeah. like freaking the fuck out. Like, Damn. What? Yeah. It, it's because... Is that a loophole? If the runner's not right, you can just scram I don't, and you're good? I don't know what it is, bro, but we're sitting there like... What the, the fuck? It just I'm fell like apart. pissed the fuck off. Not yeah. really the artist, more so like the label, like... This is all they asked for. Yeah. You couldn't. It's we're It wasn't Lyrical's job to we, do that. It was no, no, no. Okay. It was the labels. Like, we okay. were in the fucking desert, like, two and a half hours away, fucking, like, 100. Too far to go grab something Yeah, we were, like, 120 yeah. degrees and fucking camper trailers that the, the heat was going, or the air was going out. Sure. You know what I mean? So, it's just, like, Corona just started happening. Like, what well, didn't just start happening? But, like, people were still weirder about it. You know what I mean? Like, now I feel like it's a little more looser, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But, um... I guess that's just whenever they just start picking back up music video shoots. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That is about that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So just that whole shit. And it's just like, man, y'all couldn't get them the food they wanted. None of that shit, man. Yeah. It's like, so they didn't do anything. It basically got fucked up. And they were there with another major artist at the time. Mm -hmm. Like one of the biggest artists in the in the world. Showed up randomly that day to video shoot. And everyone was like, all right. Mind blown, yeah. Yeah, like, all right. Well, this is like probably going to be a distraction because like, if they don't want to be here because it's hot as fuck, then the other artist that we need here is probably going to dip too. You know what I mean? Like that type of situation. Uh -huh. So, yeah, they shot one shot and then left. And then I yeah. guess Cole talked them into like showing up in Burbank later on that night. So they had to pack up and sh f the shoot early and like go two hours back to L.A. to Burbank to film in a studio. Right. See what I'm saying? Set up something that looks kind of similar. Yeah, yeah, because they left and went back to L.A. Yeah. So it was like the f the fact that we pulled the video shoot off like how we did was like crazy, and then like I found out that after that the Dom was dropping a song with Gunna the cafeteria song, mm -hmm. and I was like well fuck why well, you know like Lemonade's got Gunna and Don Tolliver on it so yeah. kind of makes it Lemonade not as special anymore decreases yeah 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 and it's just like they dropped cafeteria the day I was playing the drop Lemonade damn you see what I'm saying so yeah. it's like I was we we were already like we got a green light for this date and everything and they said well nope you got to move it back now because Don's wanting to drop cafeteria would would gonna yeah and I, I was just like does it feel like it's crumbling apart right there yeah or? Yeah. yeah especially God after the damn. video shoot that shit's happening it feels like your job is just that over and over i feel like i'm being like sabotaged yeah. like i feel like someone's trolling me by so someone in particular or just like no fucking, just like the every, all these be. situations pulling up you yeah. know what i mean because like if people knew how much money was invested in the lemonade song like a lot mm -hmm. a lot of money was tied up in that song like imagine i have these three artists on a record and, like yeah See what I'm saying? And like video. Video. Yeah. Promotion. Like all this shit. Billboards. Crazy shit. Yeah. It's a lot of money tied up. Yeah. So it's just like I'm on the line for a lot of shit. And like, boom, the first day I was playing release, I had to push it back because two artists are dropping a song. I was just sitting there like, fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, damn man, this is this isn't gonna do as great as I thought. Did it you was. have an alternate date right away or you were just figuring yeah, it, it was, out? Yeah, it was it was either the the twenty the 14th or the 21st so a whole few weeks so this was the thing is i was supposed to i wanted to drop two singles before the album 
So my two singles at that point was I wanted to drop a super pop record and then just like some hard like rap caviar shit, which is what Lemonade was. Yeah. And the super pop shit was thrusting the the future in Sway Lee's song. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was like, I'll go with Lemonade first, and I I know I'll get it rap caviar. I know we'll do all that, whatever. And then I you know I was like, well, I don't know if we're gonna get the shit with Sway Lee, but it's a good record. The label just wanted me to drop Lemonade and then just drop the album on the twenty eighth and have like a week or two weeks of Lemonade going crazy. Yeah, I dropped two two singles. Um, what made you make that decision? I just wanted to. Just gut feeling. Yeah, bro. I don't care. I do what I want. But it's just uh, um, the lemonade shit. As soon as I dropped it, and it did the first day. It lemonade has it done under a million streams of Spotify since it dropped. Yeah. The first day it did one point one seven, and it hasn't stopped since then. Two four two four. <laughs> yeah. His password is two four two four. Yeah, everyone out there. <laughs> so that that success must just be fucking. Okay, and that, that like, worth that's it. what I was saying earlier. Yeah. Is like once it gets to that moment and you see it going up and doing that, you're just like, I honestly don't care what else hap- happens after this because yeah. like it did what it needed to do. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like talking about pressure and a song like Lemonade and all this different type of shit. It doesn't exist. All those steps, the whole process to get there, yeah. just paid off. Yeah, it but there's a bunch off. of more shit. Yeah, like behind the scenes, like because as I mentioned before, like. The Jazzy record was released already. Yeah. And on top of that, there's three. There was a version with Don's verse that leaked. See what I'm saying? So the fans think Don's verse is on there. So that's another. Yeah, but hurdle. with Don's verse, Gunna's verse, and Nav's verse, it made the song like four minutes and 45 seconds. And it's like no one wants to listen to a four minute and 45 second song right now. For sure. Yeah. And like the fans everywhere are like, we do. We. No, no, you wouldn't. No. You don't. They claim no. they would. Yeah, no. In reality. But so. Uh, the attention span. Is after like- talking with some people, it, I, I was just felt like because Dom was on the hook and the hook was so strong that we could take his verse off and keep Gunna and Nav because, you know, we still get everybody. Everybody plays a part. And um, so I took Dom's verse off. And the label, my label, well, oops. <laughs> the label uh, yeah. sent uh, Cactus Jack a version of Lemonade with Don's verse on it to approve. And they approved it. And they, they were like... Uh, but the one without it, they didn't approve. They didn't know that Don wasn't on, Don's verse wasn't on there. Uh-huh. So the song came out and they're like, yo, where's Don's verse? Oh. That's, an- that's another thing oh, that happened. Oh, shit. Then what happens? Bro, is is it, could they if they wanted just pull it like get it deleted? Well, and shit? it was just like a like I said, bro. A lot of problems, and it's just like the song doing good and doing its thing was just like everyone was like, all right, fuck it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it was a I was burning some bridges for sure, and like it wasn't my fault. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like it being a label owner, you kind of gotta take responsibility for shit like that. Uh, my my album cover, the cover art that was on it, like I had like all the artists on it, like is rides and shit like that yeah um they didn't tell me that i couldn't do that so whenever i released the cover art like they're like oh you can't have all these artists on there i'm like what the fuck why not if they're on the album it's just like look at it's looked at like a type of like merch or something like that you know what i mean and they'd feel like i'm like profiting off of like their images and shit like that. And it's like i stop. but like, the artist didn't even care it was more so the lawyers just being paranoid. but isn't it the better the album does the more that artist is going to get from it yeah but it's just like i said bro the lawyers they they don't do music they're just lawyers yeah so they don't care yeah, they're just yeah. like well that's that we're not gonna do that yeah so i already released the cover at that point i'm like fuck so i just switch the label went and switched the cover they put like a clown on there like some other shit i'm just like what the fuck is this shit so all this shit's happening bro so it's just like at that all point, at once yeah everything God, all the damn. same time period I didn't eat for like four weeks. That's kind of what jump started. Like the weight loss is just like the album shit. So I was like, fuck it. I'm you just thought gonna, might as well just roll with it. I've already do got keto. A head start. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah fuck it. We are here. Yeah. We here though. Damn. Lemonade went up and did it same. Went number one in the UK. Yeah. I got the trophy in my bedroom. My son's an executive producer on Lemonade. Yep. He's a double platinum six year old. <laughs> it's crazy. God damn. He goes to the little Zoom calls and he does like show and tells and I'll let him take the trophy or he could like. That's my dad's song or something like that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, everybody knows Lemonade, though. It's cool. That story of, like, you just would never expect that it takes that much. Oh, of course. You because And like, there's, a, there's a, oh, bro, it's not like we put it out and we're all fucking kumbaya and holding hands, like, you're like celebrating. Please, yeah. Bro, we put it out, and every day it's a new issue. Like, oh, shit. this artist has come in. They want it on their album because, you know, obviously, like, it helped with, like, album sales or equivalents or whatever because it's yeah, a really yeah. big song. They want to put it on theirs, too. 
yeah. and like you know i don't have a problem with it but so close to us releasing ours and it's like reciprocal rights you came and give them for a full year after release of the record so then they're looking at us like we're just going by what standard rules and they're like what the fuck you don't fuck with us blah, blah, blah. like all this shit so every week there's a new lemonade problem yeah like i've have i've gotten in fucking like i don't want to say fights or altercations but like disagreements with everybody but you're you're up for it it's been out two months yeah it has 320 million streams on spotify alone uh 600 million or no 700 million worldwide yeah the album today hit a billion streams in two months that's crazy yeah let's go that's cool man yeah it's a good feeling but yeah. it's not like now i'm like I'm only an artist. We just signed with an agency. We're about to do, do like DJs and all that shit, like DJing residencies. Me and Nick, Nick ass up there. Yeah, DJing. <laughs> it's <laughs> just like when you, on the outside looking in of such a big record, you would never know the adversity that goes on behind it. It's just it's just mind blowing to hear it. But the thing is, like whenever you whenever you deal with big records, there's big problems. And everybody, everybody says they want a hit time. record, but yeah. you you ready to deal with the baggage that comes from a hit record? That's why you see a lot of artists get a hit record and they fall off after, because they wasn't prepared for what to deal with what that lifestyle. With like, yeah. bro, I wake up every fucking morning at seven a.m. to go get on the phone with the UK or to go get on. Like, I did a whole Lemonade's number one in South Africa. I just found that out, like in like Cape Town and like all that shit, like Johannesburg, going crazy. Yeah, I did wake up at six a.m. and do a whole two hour zoom like 15 minute each zoom compile each radio station in south africa boom 15 minutes give them 15 minutes get off no break boom next one 15 minutes and then and it's not like you're getting asked different questions it's always yeah man we love lemonade lemonade's great so tell me what is internet money yeah. everyone and it's yeah, like yeah. you gotta just at that point it's just copy and paste yeah but that's just one day and I'm meeting with 15 and different by the radio end of it, stations. You're just fucking. Next day I got fried. Germany. The next day I got Switzerland. The next day I got Canada. Same questions. UK. Yeah. And then it's just like, well, what do you know about our country? It's like, real realistically, I never even left the city of Jacksonville, Florida, until I was 22 fucking years old. So it's like, I don't know. I, don't I never know even. Shit. I've never even left the world, yeah. like the U.S. You know what I mean? Like really? I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I've never been out of. There's some states I've never even been to. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a lot of states I've never even been to. Yeah. I've only seen the snow once. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like. How you expect me to know what the fuck yeah. is going on in the UK? I just found out I'm I'm fucking English. Are you saying this to him? Are you like going on this rant? Yeah. Bro. Well, <laughs> not. Nah, well, you got to understand. They're just on the other line like, geez, all right. Bro, if this was like a Joe Rogan ass four hour podcast mm -hmm. where I could just really go back in depth and explain to you the situations and shit. Yeah. You would be like, it all makes sense. Yeah. So basically when I'm doing these interviews. You can't shit. I got to tell them I'm London or British because I found out I was. My family hold. They lied to me yeah. for 28 years Cherokee, and told me right? I was Native American. Uh-huh. Blackfoot and Cherokee. That's kind of fucked. Until I took a 23 and me. Yeah. And then it said um 99.7% pasty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what the fuck? I'm, I'm sure you had a gut feeling, though. Nah, bro, I didn't. Really? You no. believed it? Bro, if you go look at my family, my whole benefits? family's dark. Like, Did you get benefits coming up? Nah. That's fucked. I was just like, I guess my family didn't sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> because when I would tell people I'm Native Did American, they would be like, damn, you, damn. And I'm just like. What are you talking about? Yeah. No. I'm broke as fuck. Like, what are you talking about? I never had a job. Yeah. No benefits. Yeah. There's still, like, a, a family war going on, like, if we're Native American or not. Like, it's like, all my, they're now turned, and they're wanting to still buy into but the But do you have the evidence? Yeah, but, bro, so my then? family is poor. They don't, like, to go take a $250 DNA test, like. Yeah. But you just took for it. the Yeah, but, so bro, then? that's what I'm saying is. Do you know the at that point they're like okay well then he's they miss they mix the babies up at the hospital like <laughs> it's at that point you can't the, the lies too big bro yeah. so at that point it's like fuck y'all yeah we're not native yeah. stop <laughs> and, and they're just clinging on to it we are crackers yeah. stop <laughs> yeah. we're pasty we're mayonnaise yeah we're not even Italian mayonnaise we're just not crackers even. I'm ninety nine point two percent or seven percent European yeah. I'm just a Brit, man. So I got to explain that to them. I have all these different shits. We talk about whatever, but that's what it takes to have a hit record, bro. We went off on the, but yeah. you got to do all the press shit. You got to do everything like here. Like, bro, because Lemonade is going crazy. I said yesterday on Twitter, just basically saying for people to quit putting new artists in a box. 
um i was like yo like i remember like these artists that y'all because i'll have juice world fans in my mentions all the time like wow they're a fucking juice world clone like what the fuck are y'all doing blah 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 and it's just like bro yeah when we were working with juice these same fans were in our mentions saying that he's like a little uzi vert clone mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i'm just saying that like they'll the, always find a reason that everybody just whenever they don't know something they're like oh water yeah even though i could say that ralph's and pure they're like nah this is like dasani yeah i know what this is like they're copying yeah 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 exactly you know yeah. what i mean but like you said everything's been because done of that yeah. it blows up in this big ass thing and it's like Taz Taylor calls Juice World a little Uzi Vert clone. I'm like, no. They the take that one second. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. Like, I got asked. From, I got asked on MTV UK, like, who I want want to work on the next album. I said, Post Malone. I'd love to work with Drake. I'd love to work with and Travis Scott. I'd love to work with. Obviously, like the, the three biggest artists. Yeah. And they're like, Internet Money hits an upcoming song feature in Post Malone Drake. And I'm like, bro, what? That's no. not what I said. Yeah, I can't. I don't even know Drake's phone number, bro. Like, what? What are y'all talking about, bro? Yeah. But. Yeah, or they want drama of some sort or yeah, something. Yeah, they want drama. Shit. Can't stand it. Yeah, I'm not into it. Or I got this artist from like Queens blowing me up. His name's Flea. Yeah, he don't smoke. Is he weed. here by the way? He's not here. Who was that? that <laughs> huh? Then it's not Queen. Or Key. <laughs> Ricky. Oh, Rick. Well, Ricky's here. Well, then Ricky. Rick. Have you been to a Ty Fontaine studio session? I haven't. Never. Mm. -mm. Okay. It's just like a rave or like something like that. Like one of the things you can only experience once in your life. And I don't like to go to them anymore because I'm a 28-year-old man. I'm kind of like out of it. You know what I mean? Like I can't sit there and listen to fucking summers and autumn on fucking 100. Yeah. And just sunglasses on in a dark room. And it just... See, that fucking, sounds like a great It smells time. like hard work and weed yeah. and just fronto leaf. So yeah. I'm sure you can guess what that smells like in there. Yeah. And there's just a lot of just no talking because Ty doesn't want to record in the booth. So it's just a bunch of just you don't hear no auto tune or nothing. You just hear a grown ass man. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. One more time. I don't, uh, 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 uh. One more time. And you're just sitting there. The impressions. Okay. So it's just the one time that I was like, I, I go to a Ty session and he's like making something. And everybody's freaking the fuck out. And it's message. And I'm like, this is crazy. So I'm like, y'all need this record. Yeah. And he's like, I don't know. It's the intro to. <laughs> My album, but I guess, bro, if you want it, fuck it. <laughs> you can have it. And I was like, all right, I'm taking it. He's like, yeah. Psh, bet. <laughs> he ended up giving me four songs for the album, but <laughs> bet. That might be your best impression thus far. I just remember hearing it, like hearing the snippet and texting him like, Jesus Christ, this is crazy, man. Bro. I just texted him, you got to let me shoot this. You got to let me shoot this. Yeah, message is fire. Yeah. We got to shoot something. Looking forward to, we're shooting that. Obviously, bro. Yeah. I'm talking about like some new shit. Yeah, yeah. That too. That we definitely that, too. like bro, uh like I said, bro. <laughs> I succeeded. Limit I hit a billion streams today. I don't even think about it no more. Yeah. Like the album. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Just cuz I'm like a everyday what I did yesterday. What's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? Yeah. Like sometimes when I hear Lemonade, like I I still never heard it in the car like on the radio or was that you don't play the radio? No. Yeah. Nor do I. <laughs> yeah, bro. But like whenever I see like my girl will be on TikTok or something like that and she'll just be going through and you'll hear just. It's all over. Yeah, I'm just like. It's goddamn all over. It'll hit me. I'm like, I'm making money right now. Like, damn, that's crazy. Like, this is my song. Every time she. Because whenever you're a producer, like, you only get 3% royalty. So it's just like, yeah, I did that record. Y'all all loved that I'm not getting paid on. That's great. Mm-hmm. Love it. It's amazing. And the artists are out here like, yeah, I'm a fucking creative genius. I did everything with this record. I just had to lock in. It's like, bro, you slept like 20 minutes after you made that fucking record and you hated it the whole time I made you fucking record it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's the type of shit you got to deal with a lot. So just like it actually being our song and it being like a thing, you know what I mean? It's a different experience. Yeah. It feels more rewarding. No. It's <sighs> more work. Now I got to sit here and pick out musicians to go play a live version of Lemonade for yeah. Jimmy fucking Fallon. And it's you like, didn't pick them yet? No. It's a week away, That's right? That's because we're filming on Monday, bro. Three filming days the, away. Filming Fallon. Yeah. Still don't have the guys. Any leads who you might pick or no? Listen, bro. We just got the artist to confirm two hours ago. Wow. 
Like right when you were like pulling up, basically. Yeah, around God there, damn. like on the way here. God damn. Every is it always last minute? Everything. Yeah. Bro, ten days ago I was like, you know what? I got a bunch of fire ass artists in my house. I did my project. I'm kind of packing it up for the year. I got this fire ass kid sitting around just singing, doing these fire ass songs. I'm like, he don't have no label, no deal, no none of that shit. He's just a kid I brought here from South Carolina. He's 18. I'm like, we're doing a project. And then they're like, we're doing a project? And I'm like, yeah, we're doing an album. And I'm like, it's called Pistols and Tears. And they're like, nah, it sucks. I'm like, the name Pistols and Tears sucks? And they're like, and everybody, they're like outside smoking. I'm like, man, I feel like we could go better than that. And it just ended up being the album name. And yeah. then Joe Kenji dropped his project. Yeah. Like, we just did it, mix and master it, finish it up. Did he say he didn't like Six the name? Or no one liked else? it. Him included. Yeah. My girl was right there. So if he says, even my girl hated on it, she's like, no, because yeah. Kenji's like, bro, you gotta understand, my girl's like a big like Juice World fan and like all that shit. Yeah, like she's like, it's kind of, it's not like she's a fan because I'm her guy or whatever, but it's just like, she was like into that shit already, and the, I met my girl at a Trevor Daniel show. You know what I mean? Like, she was, I don't know, how to explain this. Kind of sounds kind of weird. It actually, what? This, this really sounds weird. <laughs> I met my girlfriend at one of my artists' shows. Like, there they see them perform. Because like a lot of people is just probably gonna go off of like what they think it is or what she is or you know whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it's like not even that at all. Like she couldn't care yeah. less. But anyways, do you bro, think she, about that shit? Y- what? Like, what? Like you say something and then like people are yeah. that are watching my yeah all the time. Because I didn't even register that anything would be weird about that. Or are you just, like, you get too many, like, comments and shit to not think about it? Well, bro, it's just, like, automatically, they just they just hear, like, oh, well, he met his girl at a show, and she came to see, so she must be a groupie, or she must be, like, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. like, it's not even remotely close like that. Yeah. So. I see. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah, like, yeah, a different yeah. But her favorite, her favorite artist is Kenji, and so she's just, like, I like this song. She's kind of, like, a little mini A&R. So whenever we're, like, making decisions on, like, project names, she likes to sit in, like, bird watch, I guess, and just see us talking shit. Yeah. So uh, we're sitting there, and I'm, like, pisses in tears. She's like, no, come on. This, <laughs> the music's so good. You could do so much better than that. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's just like, yeah, we could we could do better than this. Like, no. And then I was like, no, bro, the more you say it, the better it sounds. And then they just, like, they're just like, no, nah, pisses in tears. Pisses. And they they kept saying no, and every time they kept saying no, I just said pistols of tears again. And after like the fourth time, they're like, "Bro, the more he Stop. says it, uh, it's fire." Yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, "All right, that's the shit." And then we just put it out. That's how it is, though. Like, yeah, that seems like the whole process encompassed in one example. I get these little like bursts. Yeah, persistent. And now he, ten days ago, he didn't have a, a label, none of that shit. We literally put it out completely independent through like Distro Kid, like none of that shit. And it's like. Taz, you're the label. Yes, technically, Internet Money is a is a record label. We're a production company. We're a management company. We're producers. We're artists. We could DJ. We could do whatever. So to just call us a record label, I still got to go to a label and be like, "Yo, I want to sign them. Let's get the paperwork. Let's get the shit done." Ten K, right? Yeah. He does not affiliate with no label, no none of that shit. He just got his first offer in for over a million dollars yesterday, just off of the fact of me being like. Just put out this project and we all just like, yo, the music's crazy. Let's champion it. You know, like Internet Money, we brought this kid out here yeah. a month ago from South Carolina. He's 18. I I heard his music on a Saturday and I was like, yo, this is fire. And I told my NR John, I was like, I want him out here in the morning. Yeah. So and there he was. I wake up and he's at my house God at the couch. He's like, yo, it's Kenji. And yeah. I was like, all right, bro. Yeah. But he, and then I'm like, yo, that day, whatever. Um, Power went out, so we were in the studio. That was his trial session that night. And I was like, you ain't going home. And then he tells me, he's like, yo, to be honest with you, like, I kind of left without telling my mom. Like, I told her, but we we left on bad terms type shit. Yeah. So, yeah. So that, that first session needs to be a tryout if they don't kill it yeah, that first session. My, my first session, I went six times platinum with Tekka. Yeah. My first session with Trevor Daniel, we may fall in. Also got to be in the mood for it. Yeah. A lot of times, bro, I just don't be wanting to work. And it's not because, like, I'm lazy and shit. It's just like, bro, like, to... A lot of the music shit happens at nighttime. Like, I just explained to y'all, I'm waking up at 7 a.m. to get on the phone with fucking South Africa. You know what I mean? Like, get asked the same question 50 yeah. times. Yeah. Like, by noon, you've done so fucking by, much. By noon, it's just, like, so much shit. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, like, I, for me to even, I don't want to say build up the courage, but, like, to deal with that situation, if I got interviews at 7, I start smoking by 6. You got to get mentally prepared? Yes, bro. Yeah. 
Facts. Yeah. And like it'll be that point where like I wake up and it'll be like six twenty. It's like, do I want to shower and do all this? I'm like, let's throw a hat on. Let's go outside and start smoking. I'll shower after the interviews. Fuck it. Mm-hmm. That's how it be sometimes, bro. Because it's just so like uh, I don't want to say annoying. Because like I'm definitely I'm not bitching. I'm not complaining. Like I'm definitely thankful for the fact that like people care. Yeah. And like that we get to go do this part and like all this shit. But I'm just saying like it's a grueling process, and they go through all that and then still want to work on music. At the end of the day, like. That's a whole nother grueling process. Why would you want to do it? You know what I mean? Yeah. So if I'm going to move for it and I want to work on something and I tell them, like, yo, this is your trial session. Because I'll get in there and just bullshit and leave early with my girl or do whatever and not really care what's made. But if I'm in there working, I'll be like, all right, let's throw this out. Give them this beat. See what they can do. Yeah. We'll see. So sometimes you'll just leave the the tryout session if you're not, if you're not, Bro, yeah, if you're in that mood where you don't care. Well, no, nah, I'll, t- I'll tell, I'll warn them. I'll be like, yo, like, this is going to be your trial session, like, on the way to the studio, or, like, whenever I walk in or whatever. And I'll be like, you're working with me, so I'm not dipping out and be here the whole time. So okay. I'm going to so hear everything you're doing. Okay, I see. You know what I mean? But if it is a trial session, it's a little extra. I'm there. Yeah, you got to be in the room. There. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, normal studio sessions, like, I'll pop up, I'll show face, like, they'll be working on shit, or, like, artists will be cutting records, or whatever. I'll be like, yo, what's up? And I'll be with my girl, or whatever. I'll dip out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just get all the records sent to me in the morning anyway, so. I know that, like, a lot of people don't want me listening to shit they make when them in the room because I'm so, like, critical and shit. Mm-hmm. And if they're working on something, like, say you spend three hours on a fucking song and I walk in and I say, this is dick, you could ruin your fucking confidence. You may not want to work on another fucking song again the whole night. Yeah. So it's just like, let them get their songs done. I'll listen to them in the morning. I'll listen to everything when I'm smoking. Okay. You know? So you won't do that during a trial session? You won't walk in and be like... No, nah, if, if I tell them it is and they're doing it, I'm like, I throw the kitchen sink out. I expect them to be able to adjust it. Me telling them the shit sucks right in front of their face. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, and see how they react. See yeah, if they because can... like I'm just preparing them for the world. You know what I mean? Like The world of being an artist. Bro, yeah. Like it's critical. I remember bringing an artist out here and seeing their first reaction because, you know, like whenever you're in that money and you get the, the promotion and everything pouring into a song for the first time, you get a lot of different eyes on you. So you get a lot of different people, and you're not just sending it to, like, people you went to high school with and they're people you know from your city. Like, you're sending to people looking at this like, why are they signing them when they could be signing me from a different city that you don't even know? You know what I mean? So it's like I remember seeing a, a look on an artist's face whenever they first seen YouTube comments. You know what I mean? Like shitting on them. Yeah. So it's just like, if you can handle me shitting on you, you can handle that. Of course, that's yeah. the easiest thing. Like, man, what? So that's just part of training. It's training, man. I'm preparing you. Yeah. Living with Taz is like putting in a. a you work at Bennigan's. You put in a fucking DVD to learn what it's like to work at Bennigan's, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the TV or the fucking movie Waiting, bro, where they're just like watching the fucking infomercial DVD thing the whole movie. That's me. Yeah. Have you seen that movie? <laughs> I haven't seen that. It sounds like it's relevant. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds is in it. It's a great movie. 